Hello and welcome to the second video in my little series about the integration of a cookie consent bar with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So this video will be all about Google Tag Manager and how you can use it to either allow Google Analytics 4 to track a user or prevent it from tracking a user. So we now have a look how to set up Google Tag Manager and then also how to integrate it with the homepage. So once you're on Google Tag Manager, here you see the URL you need to use. Create a new account here, which we're gonna use for this demo. Be Bright Constant Demo, country, somewhere in Germany, and target platform is web, and give the container also a name, Bright Consent Demo. Now let's create it. And here we are already inside our new account for the Tag Manager, and Directly you see here, this is the code which it says you have to paste into your homepage and we'll just do that to get started. So just copy everything, head over to Visual Studio Code and up at the top, and that's important, you should do this at the top of your homepage. Here I already added the area where the Google Tag Manager code goes. So we don't need the script tag, we already have this. Let's also remove this. Also don't need this comment. So this is the code for Google Tag Manager. And you see, if you want to dissect it a bit, here it defines a function which it directly calls. So W here is basically window, D is document, S is script. So it's just a minified way to write the code, which is very simple. Just in this minified version, it looks pretty ugly, but what it does, it basically initializes the Tag Manager. Here's also the tag ID, which is important, which kind of links this homepage by this call to your account inside Tag Manager, which you've just created. With this code in place, Google Tag Manager will be initialized when the page loads, but currently this doesn't do anything, but we'll just save it. Head again to Google Tag Manager, close this. Also down here, you can also include this. This is the no script version in case anybody without scripts activated enters your page, but we're not bother with that. So now this is how it comes up. You see here, we don't have anything added yet. And the first thing we want to do is now, we want to create some variables. So I can show you the old and simple way of using Google Tag Manager to trigger Google Analytics. Afterwards, I'll also show you the new way with consent mode, which is currently under beta and will be extended further in the future by Google. But it's good to know both ways of triggering Google Analytics. So let's start with the old way. So let's get down here to the variables and now remember what variables are interesting for us. If we head back to our code and we scroll down here, currently we don't have any variables passed to Google Tag Manager. So we don't do anything with Google Tag Manager. So this is the first thing we should do. What we want to do is here where we have this callback, the cookie consent we've set, we want to pass this information to the Google Tag Manager. And to do this, we'll define a little helper function. So we head again up here to the top where this script for the Google Tag Manager is defined and we'll add a few lines of code there. So those two lines here, we'll make sure that we have the right functions in place to call to send data to Tag Manager. And if you see here this line, what it does, it checks if there is already a window.data layer array present. If not, it will create an empty array. And this data layer is what Google Tag Manager uses to exchange data with our homepage. And you'll also see if we change this here a bit, let's move this to a new line, this WL, WL, this basically window data layer. So it's basically the same we now defined up here. So we can remove it here and just keep the rest as it is. This line sets up the data layer. This function, the gtag function, will use to push data into this layer. So it basically pushes arguments up the data layer. And down here also in this function, this tag manager function, we make use of the data layer also by pushing information events to it. Now that we have this gtag function in place, we can use it. So let's head down to our callback function here and at our first data event, we we'll use gtag and then there's a convention which I want to show you how you call this gtag. This page here, developers.google.com slash tag platform slash gtag.js reference, you see there are a few commands which you can use with the gtag. So there's config, 
get, set, event and concept. And the important ones that we're going to use is set, event and later also the concept. And we'll start with set because we want to pass some data into the tag manager. We'll just say set and as a second parameter we put the key value pairs which we want to set. And if you remember our cookie is just an object of key value pairs so we can directly push our consent cookie as it is up to the tag manager. So the tag manager will then have access to all our cookie consent settings which is quite helpful because we can use those to create variables and triggers. Now let's also take this call and put it down here in the else. So also if you have already been to the homepage and accepted some cookie then it will also be sent to tag manager. And since we're now here let's quickly look how this appears in tag manager. In tag manager up here there's a preview and a submit button. Submit pushes everything into production but we can now do a preview here and for this preview we can just use localhost about html. So I've currently set up everything running Laragon locally so a local server which serves this about page so we can connect to this about page and down here it says tag assistant debug information is viewable here in this tech assistant window. So let's click continue and here you see all the events that happen in the tag manager. So here's the initialization, containers loaded, but we don't yet see any of our variables. So let's get to the home page and see down here in the cookie. Let's for now just accept the cookie. So GA4 active would be true. So if I click it, now let's go over to the tag manager and now we see here this is the set event, the gtag set and we set gactive true. Now interesting is here you can switch through those different tabs and we see the data layer and also see that now inside the data layer this gactive variable is present. And that's quite helpful because now let's close this can head over to the tag manager and create a data layer variable which captures this value. Under variables we go to new. We just call this the same as the data layer variable but up here you could give it any name but it's helpful to just use the same. It's easier to track those. And here we see this data layer variable. So what you could also do you could capture cookies but I find this way of passing up data layer variables to tag manager and capturing those a little easier to follow than capturing cookies directly. So that's why we use the data layer variable. Now here we need the name of the variable. We leave this set to version 2. We also set a default value which we want to set to false because if anything goes wrong we don't want to have GA4, so Google Analytics, to be active. So the default value will be false. And you also can do some formatting in case of null, is sent or undefined. All those will equal to false. And we save this variable. And now since we have a variable in place, next thing is we want to create some triggers. But for a trigger, it's helpful to have some event to attach it to. So let's head back to our code and now after we set the variables, use another gtag command and this is the event command. And now here we give this event a custom name. For example, in our case, we'll just call it consent configured event and it's gtag, not greg. And we'll also do it down here. So what now happens after the cookie is set, we pass it up to Google Tag Manager via this set method and then we trigger the consent configured event. Now let's see how this looks in gtag manager. Just go to preview again and now since we already had the cookie set from before we should already see all the events in tag assistant here. So let's see here's the set event gtag set this time already to true and now here we also see our custom event the consent configured event. Now since we now have both the value and this event what we can do is stop debugging and go back to our tag manager. We can now create a trigger. Create a new trigger here and we call this gf4 active event. Now we click on custom event here and this is where we put our name for this custom event. Now if we leave it like that it will be triggered every time we trigger this constant configure event in our code. But since we call this now GA4 active event, what we can do here, some custom events, we can 
check the value of this gf4 active variable which we set before and we can check if it's true. So now this trigger will only fire if this event is triggered and this variable is set to true. Now we can save it and now it's finally time to configure our first tag which we want to execute based on this event and this tag is our Google Analytics. So if user has given consent or configured the consent and the GA4 active is set to true then it's safe for us to trigger the Google Analytics tag. For this we go under tags, we create a new tag, I just call it GA4 and up here we select the Google Analytics GA4 configuration. So this has to be called and what we want to do we want to send a page view whenever this event is called. Otherwise we would just configure the first time the user goes to a page and not capture a page view event. So we want to have both. We want to configure Google Analytics to track further events but also capture the page view for this initial event. So that's what we do. Down here in the advanced settings you'll already see down here this is consent settings. We'll not do it for now. As I said I just want to show you first the old way of activating Google Analytics with a cookie consent but next we'll also look at this. But for now we'll just leave it like that. Here you give your measurement ID and down here under triggering we can now select our GA4 active event. So now if the GA4 active event is triggered the Google tag here for Google Analytics will be triggered. Now let's give this a try. Go to preview again and since again we already had the cookie accepted. We don't see the consent bar. Let's look at the events that were fired. So now you here see a tag under the text bar and you see this is not fired all the way up until we go here to our consent configured event. And now the GA4 fires which means Google Analytics is now configured and it also will track the user. So if we go to our page, bring up the developer tools, you will see here are two Google Analytics cookies in addition to our consent cookie. Let's now delete those and refresh the page. Now you see the cookie banner comes up again and there are no Google Analytics cookies yet because if we look at the tag assistant, the tag has not yet fired. Now if we go to configure cookies and deactivate Google, Google Analytics, press submit, we get the consent cookie but again no Google Analytics cookies because if we go again to the tech assistant we see this value was set, it's set to false and this event here was sent but the tag didn't fire because our trigger which we defined was not triggered because GF4 active was set to false. Now let's go back again, delete the tag, press F5, and just accept the cookies and you see directly here we have the Google Analytics cookies in addition to the consent cookie and this time again Google Analytics tag was fired. Okay you have now learned the old way of setting up Google Analytics in Google Tag Manager. With it you're ready to go in a data protection and privacy compliant way but the problem is you'll lose a lot of data because if a user opts out you'll never know about it. And this is a topic that Google tries to address with the so-called consent mode which will be the topic of the final video in this series. So stay tuned for that and see you in the third video.